Hello? Hello? I'm back today with another nail video. Thank you for all the love on my nail videos. It makes my heart very happy because I've wanted to do nail videos for the longest time. I've always loved painting my own nails. I've always been really into DIYs. But I just didn't think anybody would want to see that kind of stuff and apparently I was very wrong. Throughout my comments every once in a while, I would see people talking about dip powder, asking me if I'd ever tried it, telling me that I should do a video on dip powder. And before you guys commented that on my videos, I had actually not tried dip powder. Once I noticed that it was a recurring theme in my comments, I decided to look into it further. I picked up a kit of my own. This one here is the Kiara Sky Dip System French kit. I got this off Amazon. If I could do this again, I don't know that I would purchase this off Amazon because this French kit is normally supposed to come with like a dip case and it did not come with one when I ordered it on Amazon. It was a little bit cheaper for that reason, but the case wasn't in it. So I'm going to have to purchase the case separately, which is kind of a bummer. I just wish that I had ordered it from the official Kiara Sky website. It took me a little while to get used to using dip powder. I don't like to create videos unless I'm confident in the products that I'm using because I like to give a lot of tips and tricks and share the trial and error that I experienced with certain products. So I'm not sure that I'll ever do first impressions on nail products. I mean, who knows? Maybe things will change down the road, but I always like to include as much information as possible in my videos. This video is going to be longer because I have a lot of things that I need to cover. I have a lot of tips that I need to share that have worked for me. I've only posted gel manicures so far on my channel. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit try a dip powder, make things a little spicy, throw on some tips on my natural nails. I haven't done tips on myself in a hot minute, so it took some getting used to. I think I have finally nailed the process, which is very exciting. I mean, look at my right hand. I did this with my non-dominant hand. I'm not gonna show you my left hand because I am due for a fill and I'm filming that after filming this intro. As always, I feel obligated to give you this disclaimer. I am not a nail tech, I'm not a professional. I am a professional makeup artist. I did not go to school for nails. I am just a girl at home DIYing things to save a couple bucks and because it's actually very therapeutic and fun for me. So I don't do nails on other people. I only do nails on myself. You should research everything that I talk about before trying the methods that I am using. I have a lot of love from nail techs in my comments, but I also have some nail techs that side eye me sometimes. If I'm doing things wrong, I'm more than happy to listen to your feedback. But rest assured, I'm only doing my own nails and I have never had any problems doing them and I've been doing them for a while. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Everything that I used was will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed. And let's get into it. So I did the unthinkable and I finally cut off my nails completely for this video. I already cleaned up my cuticles off camera to save time. I did my right hand, which took an eternity. And today we're gonna go from this to this. Alrighty, so you wanna start out by pushing your cuticles back at the very least. If you're not trimming the dry flaky parts like I have, pushing them back is important as it will prevent lifting later on. Next, I'm taking my nail surface cleanser and a lint-free nail wipe and I'm wiping away any excess oils I may have on my fingernails. And then with a gentle file, I'm filing away any natural shine on my nails in preparation for my tips. This will not only help with the adhesion of my tips, but my dip powder as well. As an extra precautionary step, I'm using my Gelish pH Bond to dehydrate my nails in preparation for my tips. These are the tips that I'm working with today. I got them off Amazon for I think like eight bucks or something. I've numbered the case myself with a label maker so that I can better see each size. These are in the shade Natural. They have a crescent moon shape and they have a little well where the glue is supposed to go. If you look closely, you can see that they are numbered. So if you drop the box and shit goes flying everywhere, you can differentiate one from another and put them back in their designated cubby. The smaller the number, the larger the tip, which is an interesting way of numbering them. But this is pretty much how all tips come. So now I'm sizing my fingers for the tips. When doing this, I'm making sure that the tips fit perfectly to my nail. You never want to go a size down because that will lead to an air pocket when you release the pressure off the nail when gluing the tip. And that can lead to lifting long term. So I'm making sure that each tip is perfectly sized from one side to the other for each one of my nails.
Now that I've got all of my tips picked out, it is time to glue them into place. The glue that I'm using is a random one from Sally Beauty that comes with a brush applicator, which I like. I'm applying the glue inside the well, making sure to get the corners, and then I go ahead and apply the tip to my natural nail. When applying, I'm pressing pretty hard because I want all of the air bubbles pushed out because again, air bubbles can lead to lifting. The tip on my thumb looks a little bit messed up because I kind of bent the tip before I applied it to my nail. And when you do that, it kind of changes the shade of the nail tips. They go white in the areas where you bend or press on them. So that's why it looks a little bit funnier than the others, but rest assured, there are no air bubbles and I still have that tip on as I'm recording this. I applied the tip further down my nail than I normally would because I find when I wear a sheer gel polish shade over top of the natural tips, it kind of gives them like an ombre effect and that's what I'm after today. It also makes my nails feel more secure. You don't have to apply the tips as far down as I did, especially if you are doing a French manicure and you don't want your smile line too far down your nail. Now I'm gonna trim my tips. You can do this using scissors or nail clippers. I choose to do this using actual tip cutters because they're a bit sharper than nail clippers and they ensure that the nail doesn't pop off, which can happen if you bend the tip when trimming. I just went a little bit too short on my middle finger and it's driving me crazy to this day as I'm editing this and as I'm looking down at it. But when I give myself a fill in my next video, I'll show you how I fix that. Okay, before we start filing the tips, let's just talk about nail dust, ventilation, and air quality real quick. So you're just minding your own business, filing your nails, and before you know it, poof, you're in a snow globe, a chinchilla's paradise. I personally react pretty badly to the dust, and so does Chris. I end up coughing up a lung for several days if I don't wear some sort of protection over my face. Normally at a salon, you're used to seeing the dust collectors like this one or the ones that are built directly into the workstation and your nail tech is normally wearing some kind of protection over their mouth and nose. But it is also important that you protect yourself when you're doing this at home indoors. You can get dust collectors online for a reasonable price for DIYers that look like this or this. Since filming this video, I have actually purchased one myself. So I'll update you on that in my next video. At the very least, Try to file your nails in a well-ventilated area and try to cover your nose and your mouth so you're not breathing in the dust because it can cause a lot of discomfort. It's not healthy for you. Long-term, it's not gonna be a good thing for your lungs. Chris got me these 3M masks for the time being and when I'm not filing my nails in my usual spot, I'm doing my nails very close to a window or a sliding door until my dust collector comes in and I'm always wearing this mask. So I just thought I'd throw that in there so that you don't have the same coughing and sneezing fit as I had the first few times that I did tips on myself, I think that was my body's way of trying to expel whatever the hell I breathed in. Because it can get real dusty up in here. Okay, now that that's out of the way, onto filing. I normally use a fairly gentle nail file for this because I file not only the sides of my nails and my tips, but the surface of the tips of my nails to remove the shine. And I also file down the edge of the tip to blend it into my natural nail. I don't want there to be like a ridge between my natural nail and the tip because it will result in an uneven dip application. Today I'm going for a square shape and like I said, I really wish I hadn't trimmed and filed down my middle finger tip as much as I did. Once I'm done with my hand file, I'm switching over to my e-file. This is optional of course, but it does make things a little bit easier. I'm including this in the video because in my last tutorial I told you that I'd speak about a few e-files that I have been trying. This one is the Power File Deluxe by Kiss. It was $19.99 and it is readily available at most drugstores as well as Walmart. That's where I picked mine up. It comes with 12 different heads, the base of the file as well as a charging cord and a plastic cuticle pusher tool. Honestly, the only three heads in the kit that I find even remotely useful are these three right here. I especially like this one right here for filing down my nails after I've applied my dip powder. It does a pretty good job. Other than that though, the rest are kind of duds. This has two speeds. It works really well when it's plugged in and charging. But the cool thing about it is that it also works cordless, which is nice because I don't always like to be stuck in one area. I don't know how much I'd recommend this to anybody because I really only find a few of the heads useful. I just thought I'd mention it anyway because I'm using it today and I thought I'd get some questions about it in the comments. I like to use this little skinny head for filing down the corners of my tips. It actually works pretty well for this purpose. It's very gentle and it doesn't overfile or harm my natural nail at all, which is nice. Once I've got my nails how I like them, I'm gonna wipe them down with a little bit of alcohol 
and a lint-free wipe. This will remove all of the nail dust. And now we can move on to the dip powder. Like I covered in my intro, I purchased my Kiara Sky French Kit Dip System off of Amazon and it does not come with a dip case. Apparently I need to purchase that separately. I went with this kit over the other starter kit because I didn't like the shades in that one and I'm really into the range of pinks that I've got here. So this kit comes with some extra brush applicators, a cute little dip powder guide, six bottles and six jars of powder. First we've got the Bond. This is the first step in the system and it ensures that all of the layers stick and stay in place. Step two is the base. This is basically a glue that adheres the powder to the area applied. Some of the labels on these bottles were crinkled, which is a little bit odd. Uh, step three is the Seal Protect. This is an acrylic nail sealer, which hardens the powder and seals all of the coats before filing and buffing. Step four is the top coat, which I won't be using today because I'm applying a gel polish later. Step five is the cuticle oil, which smells so freaking good. I love it. And lastly, we have a bottle of the brush saver, which is used to clean the brushes between applications, which helps to dissolve leftover powder that may be stuck in the bristles. The powders that you get in this kit are the shades natural, pure white, light pink, medium pink, and dark pink. Today I'll be using the Bond, the Base, the Seal Protect, and the Natural and Medium Pink powders. The first thing I'm doing is taking my Bond and applying it to my natural nails only. Next, I'm using my base, but before I apply it to my nail, I'm making sure that my natural powder is ready to go beside me. I'm doing one nail at a time because I have to work pretty quickly with the base. It can dry rather fast, so you really have to be on top of it. I'm applying it to the connecting line between my tip and my natural nail, which will build structure. And then I'm quickly dipping it into my natural powder at a 45 degree angle. I leave it in for a few seconds, I pull it out, I tap off the excess back into the jar, and I brush off whatever is left with a brush. Very important to have a little brush next to you to dust off any excess. I'm gonna do this to the rest of my nails, and one tip I have is do not lean down too close to the base when you're applying it. It can be very tempting because you wanna make sure that you cover every little nook and cranny, but because this acts like a glue it smells like one too and the first time I used it I was right up in there and it made my eyes water a little bit so try not to get too close to it Next, I'm applying the base to three-fourths of my nail, dipping it in the natural powder again at a 45 degree angle. I pull the nail out, I do a little tap, and the reason I'm only going uh, three-fourths of the way up is because I want to create an even surface from my natural nail to the tip to prevent the cuticle area from looking too thick once I go in with my colored powder. I gradually get closer to the cuticle with each dip layer, if that makes sense. Something I noticed about this kit is that the brushes in the bottles are not the greatest quality and sometimes the base application can apply a little bit uneven so I always make sure to apply it very carefully to get every little nook and cranny on my nail before dipping into the powder you want to be really careful not to miss any spots because it'll be very visible if you do and this takes practice the first few times that I did my nails I did the dip powder on my natural nails and I missed a bunch of spots and they look like shit but you get better the more that you do it I'm applying my base again, but this time I'm starting just a hair away from my cuticle area and I'm using my medium pink powder because it's really pretty and it's gonna look really nice uh, underneath my gel polish later. I've got my powder next to me ready to go and like the other steps, I dip my finger in, I pull it out, I do a little tap and I brush off the excess. Alrighty, round four. I'm repeating those steps once again, except this time I'm applying the base to the entire nail and then dipping. This may seem like a really long process, but honestly, it flies by and it doesn't take that long at all. The process though is a little bit messy and I would advise to put a piece of paper or something underneath your dip powder jar while you're dipping. That way you can save the fallout when you're finished. When I finish with all the dipping, I also make sure to dust off the rim of the jar for any leftover powder so that I can save it 
it and so that the lid goes on nice and secure afterwards. Alrighty, now it is time for seal protect. This will harden the powder and it seals all of the coats that I just applied so that I can move on to filing and buffing. It is like the dip powder version of curing the nail, basically. I'm pretty generous with this stuff and to make sure that everything is nice and hardened, that's what she said, I'm taking my makeup brush and I'm tapping my fingernails with it. If when I do this, it makes a loud hollow sound, that means that the powder has hardened and we're ready to go for filing. If it sounds soft, it probably hasn't hardened yet and it needs a little bit more time. I'm sharing this tip because the first time that I ever used the system, I went in and I started filing right after applying the seal and protect. The powder had not yet hardened and I took off a little chunk of my nail because I didn't use enough seal protect and I didn't allow it enough time to absorb into the nail and my nails were still kind of soft and wet. Now it is time for buffing and filing and you best believe that I threw on that 3M dust mask that Chris got me because shit got real dusty real fast. I just kind of go ham during this portion of the video with a few different files. I just zone out and I go to town. I alternate between a regular file, a buffing block, and my e-file. You guys always ask me uh, what grit my gentle file is and the number rubbed off, but I think it's a 240 grit. I don't like my nails too thick, so I spend a lot of time meticulously filing down the sides of my nails as well as the area closest to my cuticles. I like my cuticle area to look nice and natural. And the Kiss e-file bit that you see me using works surprisingly well for this, which is why I don't think that the kit is a total bust because I use this head quite often. Once my nails are the perfect shape, I go over them with Seal and Protect one more time and then I'm moving on to my gel polish. Before applying gel polish to a dip powder set, you wanna make sure that the surface of the nails is roughed up so that the gel polish adheres to the nail properly. If the nails are too smooth, the gel polish will peel off at the free edges within days, even if you cap them. This happened to me previously when I didn't rough up my nails uh, properly. Like all of my gel manicure videos, I'm starting out with my gelish foundation. This is the base layer, sticky adhesive bond between the nail and the gel polish to follow. Once my foundation is on, I am curing it in my gelish mini LED lamp for 45 seconds. color today, I'm once again using OPI Bubble Bath because I just can't stop. This is such a pretty shade and it looks so nice on long nails. I will definitely do brighter colors in the future, but for this first dip powder video, I just had to do a classic pretty set because it looks beautiful on everybody and I just can't get enough of the shade. So I'm gonna do two coats of this and I'm curing each coat for 45 seconds. Next, I'm moving on to top coat. I'm just doing a very thin layer of my gelish top coat and I'm making sure to cap my free edges to prevent peeling and lifting later on. I'm popping that under the lamp for 45 seconds and then I'm taking my nail cleanser wiping off the sticky residue left behind, and that about wraps it up. The last step is rehydrating my cuticles with the Kiara Sky cuticle oil, which smells amazing. Like I said earlier, it's just so nice and luxurious. And that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give this a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you want more videos like this in the future. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed. And I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.